That's not good news. You see, the good news is that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ has done it all on that cross, my friends, so that you don't have to become a religious individual and wear a, a, a nun's habit or a hijab. That doesn't get you to heaven. You don't have to fast and pray, visit Lewis and pray to a, a Roman Catholic priest. That doesn't get you to heaven. You see, the Bible tells us clearly, it's not by any works of righteousness which we have done, but by God's mercy, He saved us through the washing and regeneration, renewal of the Holy Spirit. You must be born again, you see. You need a heart change. You need God to take away your cold, stony, indifferent heart, your heart that's indifferent to this, the Word of God. You see, until He does that, this book, the Bible, that comes down from, from God, this book that God has given us, it'll just be dead letters on a page until you have a, a new heart, until God awakens you spiritually. You see, we're all born dead. Since Adam and Eve sinned, Adam, our first parent, who God made from the dust of the earth, you can read it, all this is what I'm telling you in the Bible. Yes, he did, my friend. Yeah, you know he did. Don't be deluded. Soft deception is a terrible thing. The God of the Bible, he created a man, didn't he? Adam. Our first parent from the dust of the ground and then he created a woman as a helpmate for her husband that's a woman's role in life to be a helpmate for her husband not to henpeck him not to wear the trousers not to be his boss God made a woman as a helpmate for her husband and he made a woman from the ribcage of Adam that's not evolution guys evolution's a fairy tale for grown-ups. Don't let evolution make a monkey of you. You were made in the image and likeness of Almighty God. God made you a God who's love. You see, animals don't have the capacity to love, do they? You say evolution's not a Evolution's a fairy tale for grown-ups. We used to, when we were kids no, at school, they taught us fairy tales. Yeah, science is real. Yeah, we agree with science. Good yeah. science. Yeah. Science is, means with knowledge, doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. But bad science like evolution, that's, that's not good. That's lies. It's proven. It's not proven, my friend. Who proved it? Scientists. No, it's evolution. The evolutionary process says that things die out. The, weak, the strong take advantage of the weak, and things die out. Don't, but doesn't it? The only thing that isn't <coughs> provable is the entities of religion. You can't prove God. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Without God, you you can't you can't know anything. Proof presupposes truth and without God you can't know anything in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge so he's not only an all-powerful God but all power derives from him when Jesus was in front of Pilate and Pilate said uh, you know speak up for yourself you know because Jesus just went like a lamb to the slaughter he came for that very purpose to die on that cross and Pilate said speak up for yourself I have the power to crucify you. And you know what Jesus said? He says, you have no power over me unless it's given to you from above. And that's the same for any human being in this world. You know, no tyrant has any power over you unless it's given from above. Yeah. And God is working out his purposes in, in spite of all the wicked, unbelieving tyrants in power, in charge, all the wickedness of man. God is working out his purpose. Nice day, anyway. Yeah, you too. You got, a, you got a Bible? I have not got a Bible. Though. Well, you should read your, Bible. read your Bible, my friend. Put down the science books and pick up your Bible. You'll be far better for it. So don't, don't die and go to a devil's hell. There is a hell, hell to be shunned. We, we should be fearful of standing before God. Because he's far more terrifying than any devil. He's far more terrifying than any terrorist. The God of the Bible is holy, pure, and he's going to judge with perfect judgment on the day of judgment. He's a just judge who will do what's right. Okay. Yeah, I can turn it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can turn it down. Can you uh, be reasoned with? So I don't.
see, what happened was, sorry, my dear, sorry, I wasn't, I've turned it down, actually, turned it down. I'm sorry about the noise, I mean, I, I suspect it's not the, no, the noise level that's the problem, it's the message, but it is what it is. You see, people, it's, truth sounds like hatred to those who hate the truth. Truth sounds like hatred to those who hate the truth. Don't be a hater of the truth. Come to a knowledge of the truth. Come to the Bible. Come to the Bible. You say, well, I was brought up in this religion. My parents taught me that this was the truth. Well, your parents were wrong if it's not this. They were just fallen heads teaching other fallen heads. You say, my school teacher at school taught me evolution. I mean, mine did too. I went to a Roman Catholic school, work that one out. I was a Roman Catholic before I became a Christian. Twenty years ago, I became a Christian. There's a big difference, friends. I could explain it to you. But the main difference is this, that Roman Catholics are trusting in what they're doing to get to heaven, maybe scrape into purgatory. There is no purgatory. And the Bible says that it's not by any works of righteousness which you or I do. Nobody ever goes to heaven for anything they do. You okay there, my friend? You like a Bible? Got free Bibles. You can read the Word of God yourself. We're not after your money. And we're certainly not after the praise of men. The fear of man is a snare. The fear of mankind is a snare, a trap. But the righteous, you see, are as bold as lions, the Bible says. So don't be fearful of man. Don't be fearing people. Fear God. And depart from evil. God killed his son 2,000 years ago. God the son, the eternal son of God. You know that he came to this dark world full of sin, all its hatred of him. He was born of a virgin. And he lived a perfect life. Can you imagine living a perfect life? You and I haven't lived perfect lives, have we? We have sin. And on the day of judgment, the God of the Bible is going to leave no stone unturned, you see. He's going to judge with perfect, righteous judgment. And nobody will have an excuse. Nobody will stand before the God of the Bible on the day of judgment and say, Well, I was born that way. Or, I believe the science, I followed the experts. We shouldn't be following the experts after these last three or four years, should we? Experts get things wrong. And so the, the greatest need that you have today, I don't know much about you, but I don't need to. I know you're like me. You're a, a being who's going to die at God's appointed time. And it's only in a little while, within a hundred years from now, everybody up and down the street will have ended into eternity, won't they? That have died. Death is very real, friends, so it doesn't make any good sense sticking our head in the sun pretending it's not going to happen. It's appointed, your day of death, fixed already, for you to die. And then after death, we don't just rot in the ground and cease to exist. After death comes judgment. You're going to stand before Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he is the judge. He's the judge of all humanity. God has highly exalted him and he's seated him at his right hand and he's given him a name that's above every other name. Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ is above every name. And he's the Lord of Lords. He's the Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ is your judge. And when he calls you to himself, that's the end. Game over, friends. Game over. No opportunity to become a Christian then, to realize your error and become a Christian then. Only Christians go to heaven. Only Christians have peace with God. You see, if you could get to heaven any other way, other than Christianity, it makes Jesus Christ's sacrifice a nonsense. If you could get to heaven through Roman Catholicism and praying to Mary and praying the rosary and going to Lewis, going to church every week and sticking a few quid in, if you could get to heaven through Roman Catholicism, why did Jesus Christ die on that cross if you could do it yourself? It's not by any works of righteousness which we have done. Nobody ever goes to heaven. In the history of humanity, nobody ever goes to heaven for anything they do. 
whether it's fasting, praying, visiting Mecca or Lewis, saying the Shihada, or praying the Rosary, none of that can get you to heaven, friends. Don't you get it? The God of the Bible isn't that puny. He doesn't need anything from his followers. And what he's done, he's done it all. He crucified his own son. The Bible says it pleased God to crush him. His own son. Like Abraham, when Abraham was told by God to sacrifice his own son Isaac on the altar. And Abraham went. He was going to do it. But God provided a ram. And that was a picture of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for the whole of humanity. See, Jesus Christ is the only way. He's the only saviour on offer. And without him there is no saviour. He's the, the saviour of the world. is the only saviour on offer. He died on that cross for his people's sins, for all their sin. So it doesn't matter how far you've sunken into the depths of depravity and sin, all the wicked, nasty, sneaky, selfish things you've ever done in life, all the depraved things you've done that you wish, you wish you hadn't, you're ashamed of, or you should be, it can all be forgiven. It can all be forgiven, wonderfully forgiven at the foot of that cross, friends. Jesus has done it all. He said it's finished, paid in full. And that's the only way that any human being can get to heaven. And that's why Jesus said, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many find it. But narrow is the way that leads to life, and few find it. Strive to enter in the narrow gate. Jesus Christ is that narrow gate. He's the door. He's the way, the truth, the life, and nobody goes to heaven but by him. So please think about these things. God has provided a way for you to be forgiven your greatest need taken care of. You say, what's, what's my greatest need? Well, your greatest need isn't money. I don't know if you heard or not, but one of the Rothschilds died recently. Rothschilds, they have a lot of money, don't they? They've had a lot of money for a long time. One of the Rothschilds died. All his money couldn't save him. He had all the money in the world, you might say. Rothschild. And he died just like everybody else. His day of death, like yours, was appointed. God called him to himself. Rothschild. He died. All, all that money couldn't prevent his death. And people were asking, well, I wonder how much he left. And the simple answer to that is he left it all. Every penny. He left it all. And that's the same as you, my friends. You and I, we're going to leave it all behind. So what are you living for? What will you give in exchange for your soul, Jesus asks. Are you living for money? The comforts in life? The pleasure in life? What are you living for? The answer to that needs to be Jesus Christ. Jesus said that he is... <coughs> Whoever loses his life for my sake can keep it. But if you try and keep your life, you lose it. Losing your soul forever in a devil's hell. Don't do that to yourself, Lancaster. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish. You see, it's by faith. God doesn't want anything from you. He doesn't need anything from you. He's done it all. Now he says, look to my son. Whoever believes will not perish. But whoever doesn't believe is condemned already. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, through Jesus Christ, the world might be saved. And whoever doesn't believe is condemned already. Don't die condemned. Don't die in your sin. Trust Jesus Christ. Look to Jesus Christ on that cross and believe that what he did on that cross was for you and all the wicked, nasty, selfish, sneaky things you've done in life. They can all be forgiven there. And the judge, the just, holy, righteous judge of all humanity will look at you as though you've never sinned. You can have the righteousness of Jesus Christ given to your account. And you can live the rest of your lives in joy. A joy that you've not yet experienced a joy that every Christian knows that their greatest need is taken care of. You see, Christians are the only people who know that when their end comes, when God calls them to himself, they end up in a, in a heaven, in a, in a joyful place, a paradise. 
Christians are the only people who know that for certain. All of the religions, all of the people are just hoping for the best. But Christians know for certain because the Bible says, God's word says, these things are written. These, these things are written so that you know you have eternal life. Sorry, my dear. That's not what God says. Yeah, but you, you need to be a Christian to get to heaven, is what I'm saying, my dear. That's what God says. We disagree with you totally. Well, you can disagree, but you're disagreeing with, with God Almighty, my dear. I'm willing to do that, because I don't believe but, the So, do you have infinite, limitless knowledge? Do you have infinite... As much as you do. Do you have... I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not the standard. God knows everything. God knows everything, my dear, and you don't. Well, he knows you're being offensive. I'm not, you're if, you're, if you're offended, it's because you hate the truth. Truth you're seems not like doing truth. Any truth to seems well. By being as big well, that's that's as your. You, are. you see, you know the Bible says God's word never returns empty. You see, you can't. People say to me all the time, you know, you're, oh, you're doing it wrong, or you're putting people off. You're already on the broad path that leads to a devil's hell. You're in the worst possible predicament you could be in. And God's word is powerful. The gospel is the power of God to save you. To put you in your right mind. To save you from the, the precipice of hell. To save you from a, a lake of fire that burns forever and ever with fire and brimstone. Can you imagine when you lose your soul? It's final. There's no weekends off in hell. There's no friends in hell, no fun in hell. There's no nice sunny days to enjoy in hell. Be hot, oh, well, it's not a pleasant hotness. It's not a comfortable... There's no comfort in hell, my friend. You see, God, he gives us every good gift. So when you're enjoying life, a measure of enjoyment in life, that comes from God. But in hell, he's going to withdraw all his goodness from those who end up in hell for all eternity. And they'll suffer unimaginable terror forever and ever. But you say, well, you're trying to frighten people. Yeah, you're right. I am. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Is being gay okay? Is being gay okay? Yeah. By God, you mean? Yeah. No. But I like Freddie Mercury. Yeah, Fred, Freddie Mercury was one. Yeah, that's right. Can I listen to Queen in heaven? No. No. No, there'll be... Far more glorious things than listen to pop bands in heaven. Yeah, but I'd rather listen to Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, you would at the moment because you, you haven't got a new nature. But when God gives you a new nature, when he changes your heart, and he gives you a love for him and a hatred for your sin, then you're a different person. I'd rather listen to Queen. At the moment, you'd rather listen to Queen. I, I get that. You like pop songs and pop music. I know everybody would say the same thing because you're living for the world and the things in the world that's passing away. This world is transient. It's passing away, my friend. You're not going to be here for longer. Much longer. What's boring? <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're telling me that all the, all the, the, the pleasure in life is, is far better than knowing that your eternity, that lasts forever, this lifetime's really short, remember, vapor. You're, you're trying to convince me that living for all the pleasure you can get out of life, the alcohol, the se sex, the... The, the drugs and, and the, the pop music and telly. You're telling me, you're trying to tell me that living, oh God, no, this is what you're, you're, you're saying. You're saying that it's far better to live for a tiny uh, bit of fun in life because uh, you're going to die and spend eternity in hell. Is that your position? Yeah, there's a heaven or a hell. Yeah, God made you. God made you to live forever. Everybody has an immortal soul. That's why that God made you that way. You were born that way. To you have an immortal soul. You are going to spend forever somewhere. Oh yeah, you are going to spend forever somewhere. Uh, Hello, my friend. Just want to turn it down a little bit. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I did. I've turned it down once. I'll do it again. Uh, yeah, they're just saying they can't hear the customers and stuff. Okay, Don't that's fine. Yeah. yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, did, did we did we end that discussion, my friend? Did you get your question answered? Did you get your question answered? Yeah, it's better to be in hell. It's better to be in hell. You're serious. See, and I, I mean, I'm not surprised you would say that because 
people's nature are such that they would rather go and spend an eternity of suffering for unimaginable terror forever and ever rather than worship the God of the Bible. Well, because God is holy, is just, is a just judge. Well, suffering now, you're not suffering as much as you will in hell for all eternity. Because we live in a fallen world, we live in a world that where people get angry and hate each other, the devil divides and conquers, so all that craziness that's happening in the Middle East, it's the devil at work dividing and conquering. It's, the Jews aren't the problem, the Gazans aren't the problem. It's the devil who is uh, he, he's pulling mankind's strings. Yeah. No, you don't have free will. You're held captive, the Bible says, to do the devil's will until you become a Christian. Well, you don't have choice to follow Jesus. No, you don't have a, a choice to get right with God. Oh, well, then if there's no choice, then there's no choice. But that doesn't, that doesn't, ab that, that doesn't absolve your, your responsibility before God. It's not my choice. Yeah, but that doesn't get you off the hook. It's still not my choice. Because God commands all people everywhere to repent. Like I said, it's not my choice. So it's not my choice. Yeah, and if you, if you repent, God has given you... Get, no, you can't. It needs to be... That's right. It needs to be God-given. Okay, so I'm meant to go to hell. Well, I don't know. I don't, I'm not God. I'm not the one deciding. You see, anybody who ends up in hell, they get what they deserve. They get what they deserve because they've sinned against God. They've gone far from Him. They've done what's right in their own eyes. They've worshipped other gods. It's a terrible thing, idolatry. And you're an idolater. Regardless of whether you're religious or not, you're an idolater. You worship something. It might be the person you look at in the mirror each morning. No, idolatry. You're an idolater. That means you worship something. No, I worship Jesus. Yeah, that's it. Because the number one commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. And a Christian tries to do that. Don't Doesn't do it perfectly. Yeah, but... but it matters, it matters who you worship, you see. What's up, my dear? The Bible also has about the good Samaritans, so humans should treat other people with great respect and the rest of it. Sacrificial love, isn't it? Have you heard of that, sacrificial love, agape? Is that just another phrase for worship? No, it's the, the Greek term for love. It has four meanings. One of them is agape, and it's sacrificial love, where you're looking out for the best interest of the one loved. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm looking out for the best interests of everybody here who can hear under the sound of my voice their eternal destiny. But shouldn't we love everybody? Don't, don't take this the wrong way. I love you. I love, I love human beings. So shouldn't I do the best for everybody? Yeah, love your neighbor as yourself. But the, the, the greatest commandment is to love God. Love God first. The God of the Bible. It's not just, not just any God. Not just any, any deity you, you, you dream up or decide to follow. It's the God of the Bible. Would all the other deities be in hell? There is no other deity. Yeah, but, would they be in hell? but there is no other deity. There is no other God. There's only one true living God and that's the God of the Bible. All other religions lead to hell. That's what? No, there's no fun in hell. They've got what? But they're, they're meaningless. They're just lies. I've got Queen, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're just lies, my friends. I mean, all other religions are lies. What can I say? We have the truth. It's been here for thousands of years. And it, uh, what? I can't hear. You pick the music? Well, you can do that. And, uh, you know, you, you, you might do that and end up in hell. But that's your destination. If you choose anything in this life other than Jesus, he needs to be, he needs to be your main focus. He needs to be the very center and citadel of your life. Yes, he does. That's the only way you're going to heaven. You, you wave the white flag of surrender. I know you don't want to, but God can make you want to, is the point. You see, you must be born again. And that's a work that God does where, he, where he, you're dead spiritually. You're dead to the things of God. Uh, you're indifferent to them. But when God makes you alive spiritually, you love God and hate your sin. And that's what a Christian is, you see. And if you're a churchgoer and you've never been born again, you're just a pew warmer. You're just a pew warmer. You know, you might as well just pack it in now and stop being a hypocrite. Stop reading your Bible. Don't 
Don't carry on like that. Get right with God. Jesus said you must be born again. If anyone is not a man or a woman isn't born again, they don't enter heaven. You need God to change your heart, make you a Christian. I can't make you a Christian. I can't. If I could persuade you to become a Christian sometime next week, somebody could persuade you to become a Muslim. It's not by human will, you see. It's the very power of God at work when someone becomes a Christian. And you must be a Christian because only Christians go to heaven. There's no other way, friends. And if you've got this picture in your head of being miserable and doing things you don't like doing, going to mind-numbingly boring uh, church meetings, that's not what Christianity is. Christianity is the life of God at work in you, changing you to be more like Jesus Christ. Just consider all the people you're giving a headache to. Okay, my dear. I'll consider it when I'm on my way back home. I'll consider... A lot of things on my way back home. This is a nice place. I might come back. I'd like to come back someday. See if any of you have been saved. You'd like that? What? You need? Oh, praise the Lord. You're a Christian. Oh, thank you. See, you've got people who understand the truth here. You know, I didn't know this lady. She, she appreciates the message. She understands the truth when it's spoken. Because God's changed her heart. And that's what God needs to do to you. Change your heart. So that you love the truth. And hate all the... I mean, look at the state of the nation at this moment in time. Men marrying men. Women marrying women. Little kids being told that they can change sex. A little boy can become a girl. It's insanity. And you and I know it's insanity. Don't we? And that's where we're at. And that's what happens when people and nations turn their back on God. You see, it's God who gives us... Law, absolute moral laws to live by that are good for society. This nation has been greatly blessed when we've been God-fearing people, but now look at us, facing financial ruin, facing maybe nuclear war with Russia. We're not in a good place. We've got lying, deceitful, manipulative, corrupt politicians leading us. You know, the Bible says when the wicked rule you. When the wicked rule, God's people groan. It's not good having wicked rulers, but that's where we're at. We get the rulers we deserve. And we need to be God-fearing men and women. God-fearing men and women. We need to come back to God. See, it's not a... I know your idea of being a Christian is maybe like that, that effeminate guy on Emmerdale Farm, that guy with the dog collar. And that's what you think a Christian is. But that isn't what a Christian is. That's a, a misrepresentation of what a Christian is. A Christian is someone who, who are people of integrity. People of integrity. People of strong conviction. People who won't call black white and white black. And that's what this nation is doing at this moment in time. They're calling evil good and good evil. Women queuing up in their droves to murder their unborn baby. That's wicked, it's evil, it's murder. And God says it's murder and he says he hates the hands that shed innocent blood. So there's a way of righteousness, aligning your thoughts up with this, the word of God, and living a godly life, which is better for you and for society. Or there's a way you can do what's right in your own eyes, which never ended well. Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? Burned with fire and brimstone. God destroyed those two cities, didn't he? And everybody in it. So you carry on. Doing what's right in your own eyes. Refusing to believe. Refusing to repent. It won't end well. And see, Jesus Christ is coming back. Jesus Christ, the God-man. 100% God, 100% man. Willingly laid down his life. He said, nobody takes it from me. I laid down for you now power to take it up again. Jesus has power over death. And he defeated death when he died on that cross. Wicked men and women wanted him put to death because they hated him. Because he testified that their works are evil. And Jesus is still testifying that mankind's works are evil today. And he willingly laid down his life. He was buried. Three days later he defeated death. Rose bodily from the grave. And was seen by over 500 eyewitnesses at one time. He ascended up into the clouds from heaven and he's going to come back the same way. 
is now seated at the right hand of power. Jesus Christ is coming back, your judge. He's going to return at the shout of an archangel in flaming fire, taking vengeance on all those who don't know God and those who don't obey this. Jesus Christ is coming back, a, a conquering king, a vengeful judge. And he's going to judge all those who don't know him. All those who don't know that he's the eternal, sinless son of God who's existed forever. The second person of the Trinity. This is eternal life, Lancaster, that you know the one true living God and Jesus Christ whom he sent. You can be saved, your greatest need taken care of. You can live the rest of your lives with joy, no matter what's going on in the world. And all its chaos. You see, the God of the Bible is in